horrific event. This is a, a train collision between a commuter train and a freight train just northwest of Los Angeles near Chatsworth. Listen to Mr. Thompson's report on the world crisis. Well, November there is 22nd. more drama on the financial front today. The Fed's considering a new way to pump up what is a very faltering economy with the government potentially taking ownership stakes in U.S. banks, even some healthy Twin ones. cities this morning Level will be covering the latest uh, details coming into us about this bridge collapse. And in fact, we have so actually obtained... that kind of a prediction, do you hear that? A inflationary depression is coming pirates. down the road. Yes, pirates. Pirates seized a ship last week. Off Listen to Mr. Thompson's report on the world crisis, November 22nd. This is an NBC News special report. A presidential address. Mr. President of the United States. Today, as before, the fate of millions across the world depends upon the unity and resolve of the American people. Our country has shed more blood for the freedom of other people than all the other countries in the world combined. We are steeped in the tradition of honor and sacrifice for the greater good. We are proud of this heritage. I believe that Americans are once again ready to achieve this greater good to achieve this greater good, greater good, this greater good. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Thompson will not speak to you tonight. His time is up. I have taken it over. You were to hear a report on the world crisis. That is what you are going to hear. For 12 years you have been asking, who is John Galt? This is John Galt speaking. I am the man who loves his life. I am the man who does not sacrifice his love or his values. I am the man who has deprived you of victims and thus has destroyed your work. And if you wish to know why you are perishing, you who dread knowledge, I am the man who will now tell you. You have heard it said that this is an age of moral crisis. You have said it yourself, half in fear, half in hope that the words had no meaning. You have cried that man's sins are destroying the world, and you have cursed human nature for its unwillingness to practice the virtues you demand. Since virtue to you consists of sacrifice, you have demanded more sacrifices at every successive disaster. In the name of a return to morality, you have sacrificed all those evils which you held as the cause of your plight. You have sacrificed reason to faith. You have sacrificed wealth to need. You have sacrificed self-esteem to self-denial. You have sacrificed happiness to duty. You have destroyed all that which you held to be evil and achieved all that which you held to be good. Why then do you shrink in horror from the sight of the world around you? That world is not the product of your sins. It is the product and the image of your virtues. It is your moral ideal brought into reality in its full and final perfection. You have fought for it. You have dreamed of it. You have wished it. And I, I am the man who has granted you your wish. Your ideal had an implacable enemy, which your code of morality was designed to destroy. I have withdrawn that enemy. I have taken it out of your way and out of your reach. I have removed the source of all those evils you were sacrificing one by one. I have ended your battle. I have stopped your motor. I have deprived your world of man's mind. Men do not live by the mind, you say. I have withdrawn those who do. The mind is impotent, you say. I have withdrawn those whose mind isn't. There are values higher than the mind, you say. I have withdrawn those for whom there aren't. While you were dragging to your sacrificial altars the men of justice, of independence, of reason, of wealth, of self-esteem, I beat you to it. I reached them first. 
I told them the nature of the game you were playing and the nature of that moral code of yours, which they had been too innocently generous to grasp. I showed them the way to live by another morality, mine. It is mine that they chose to follow. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. All the men who have vanished, the men you hated, yet dreaded to lose, it is I who have taken them away from you. Do not attempt to find us. We do not choose to be found. Do not cry that you need us. We do not consider need a claim. Do not beg us to return. We are on strike. We, the men of the mind. Our strike consists not of making demands, but of granting them. We are evil, according to your morality. We have chosen not to harm you any longer. We are useless according to your economics. We have chosen not to exploit you any longer. We are dangerous and to be shackled according to your politics. We have chosen not to endanger you, nor to wear the shackles any longer. We have no demands to present to you. You have nothing to offer us. We do not need you. Are you now crying, no, this was not what you wanted? A mindless world of ruins was not your goal? You did not want us to leave you? you moral cannabis. Through centuries of scourges and disasters brought about by your code of morality, you have cried that your code had been broken, that the scourges were punishment for breaking, that men were too weak and too selfish to spill all the blood it required. You damned man. You damned existence. You damned this earth, but never dared to question your code. You went on crying that your code was noble, but human nature was not good enough to practice it. And no one rose to ask the question, Good? By what standard? I am the man who has asked that question. Yes, this is an age of moral crisis. Yes, you are bearing punishment for your evil. But it is not man who is now on trial. And it is not human nature that will take the blame. It is your moral code that's through this time. Your moral code has reached its climax. The blind alley at the end of its course. And if you wish to go on living, what you now need is not to return to morality, but to discover it.